Hello, my peeps. <laughs> this is Tracy here doing voiceover for the first half of the video because, yes, I was halfway through the video when I realized that the microphone on my camera was turned off. So I'm going to do my best. Um, I only just recorded this video and already I'm not 100% sure what's going to come up next. So I will probably talk less just so I don't end up talking over something important that I need to save, but um, I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, the first two tags had no sound. As soon as I started the card, there was sound. So that's when I realized so there is sound at that point. This is the new birthday sparkle kit, which I was originally not going to get. It's lots of gold. And I was like, mm. but the more I saw, the more I loved this kit. So I'm going to show you the projects and I'm going to show you how I generally deal with a kit when I get one. Um, I tend to not read the instructions, but I'm trying to get better for my videos of showing you what the instructions say, where the helpful pieces are, because I do realize that maybe most people do actually use the instructions. Um, this kit comes with a stamp set. I think that particular stamp there looks like a beehive. Um, so I'm sure there's lots of opportunities to do something cool with that one. It comes with a stamp set. It comes with the early espresso ink spot and then a block and all the stuff you need. Our kits are so awesome. For being all self-contained this kit has twine so you'll need a pair of scissors unless you want to gnaw the twine apart with your teeth i'm thinking most people that's not really what they want to do for the cards they make but uh yeah everything else you need is in the box uh this particular kit makes six tags three each of two designs and then six cards three each of two designs so yeah the first thing i like to do when i get a new kit is just kind of find which pieces go with which project, separate them out and make sure I have all the pieces and know what goes where. Uh, the kits come with all the adhesive you need. So in this case, there are dimensionals and glue dots. Uh, sometimes the kits will have tear and tape in them. Sometimes the kits have embellishments in them. This one, the kit is, uh, the way it's designed is cool enough that it doesn't actually need little gems or anything in it. Got some silver glitter paper and a very good stamp set. It's fun to try to do this because at this point I'm thinking, what was I saying and what should I be saying and why is it pausing for so long? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, the, so when you first turn into the instructions, when you first like open the flap, though usually the first page you will see there actually shows you the projects and what goes with which piece and then there'll be individual pages for each project showing you how to go put it together so this is just separating out the four projects And again, I have no idea what I was talking about for so long there. <laughs> Found the twine. I do notice most of the time when the kits come, the twine is left in the kit. So unless you have a system where you have little clips or pins or elastics or something, keep that little bag because it is super easy to put the twine back in it so it's not constantly unraveling everywhere. Uh, this kit came with what looks like toothpicks that are used for the, in the cupcake, it's what it's kind of stabbed into the icing of the cupcake. Uh, the glitter paper is for all of the projects. Not all of the projects. There's two, two or three projects that use it. Um, so yes, it's all just on one piece. And it does turn out that those, those um, gold glitter are actually stickers. I love the card with the balloons. That's actually probably what sold me on it. Originally, I was like, mm. but the more I saw the, the projects, and especially that one, I was like, oh, I love this one. The uh, envelopes are very nice in this kit. Lots of little um, gold foil, and even just gold foil on the corners in the front that looks like Kind of like the old-fashioned suitcases used to look with the little protection on the corners. Uh, 
This is the card base, which I did not realize had that much printing on it. But that made it much easier to, it's a, it's a very nice card too, and it's much easier to achieve with pre-printed. Okay, so these are the cupcakes for the one tag and sparkler background tags for the second tag. There is an, a couple extra balloons because of the way they, they can fit three to a page, but you only need two per tag. So there's a couple extra ones of those. There's a couple extra labels. Um, you'll see after when I post this video and I post the pictures of the projects, I've made a couple extra cards, just adding card bases and then using all the little bits and pieces that were left over. Um, not stealing from any of the projects. The projects could all still be completed, but there's just some extra pieces. Like those frames, the frame is part of the card, but when you, the, these pieces that you punch out of the middle, those are left over. So I used some of those. Um, I made a cake line, a cupcake liner out of one of them. Um, so yeah, I'll show you some extra ones afterwards. Um, but there's enough pieces to make all of the projects and then a little bit left over. What they're showing right now, the little, or what I'm showing, I guess, the little gold foil, I actually cut a strip. When you pop out the three long skinny pieces of gold, um, there's, there's printed pieces in between them. I actually snipped one of those out to, for, to put on one of the cards because it looks pretty much like the other one. So yeah, look at your, uh, you can use your negative pieces for, as a mask. Um, so don't, um, don't just automatically discard everything. Have a good look at it because you just never know what am I coming in handy for. And these little bits are will turn into candles on the the one tag, one tag of the one card, one tag. Those uh, cool little background pieces. I thought they. Kind of look a little bit like the new kind of style of, of cupcake liners which i imagine was their intent um very well designed these kits from stamp it up and the 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 artisans the designers at stamp it up are very talented individuals so the icing on the top you only will have noticed um had um couple little like lighter lines on it that it gives it sort of the contour line so to make it look 3d but you'll notice when I make mine I screwed up and had to fix it um, you want to stamp your sentiment in between those lines so you make sure it's high enough up that it does not get um, covered when you assemble your thing but you'll see that one coming this is this is a fun little kit that's me dropping the block on the floor um, because as I do this, I am still playing with the stamp set <laughs> um, and I've already made a few, a few extras. I just, it's a fun, I told you it's a fun kit and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying playing with it. So giving you some ideas, I hope. Yeah, seriously, I don't know what I was talking about the first time that it was taking so long to get these little bits and pieces sorted out.
All right, so I've got all my pieces sorted and I'm going to start putting the individual projects together. There's a little slit in the top of that icing piece that that toothpick goes into. But otherwise this one is pretty easy, a little bit of stamping and some assembly. And like I said, these instructions are really good. They will show you where everything goes. Uh, if you put, well, based on how the original designer designed it, but um, if you put uh, glue dots or uh, dimensionals behind it, uh, it's worth paying attention to how they lay things out too, because they usually have, you know, they plan the whole thing out, so they know where not to put them. In this case, you wouldn't want to put your dimensionals too close to the top because your your cupcake liner is going to overlap a little bit onto the icing to give it the look that it gives so you don't want to have those too close to the top so look at the instructions because they'll give you some some good pointers in there just use a glue dot to stick the star down to the to the stick i don't know if there's a right or wrong way to that stick it's kind of a little bit darker on the edges and lighter on the flat side, but either way works, and either side is big enough to stick the star to. Not really sure what I was doing there. I was going to say, is that me fixing my mistake? But no, that must have just been tricky to get the hole out of the stick. I don't know what I'm doing. So yeah, this one, I, I didn't even look at the instructions first. I was just like, okay, there's the picture. I put a yay. And it wasn't until after I was starting to assemble that I realized the yay needs to go a little bit higher up. So between those two lines off on the one side is, is where the yay belongs. I think both those pieces are put up on dimensionals um, and that's which does make them overlap a little easier I find than, than if you are trying to like, glue them both down because then where the whichever one's on top gives kind of a lip onto the other one so on dimensionals they definitely give a smoother smoother look and I just you know me I like dimensionals I like to have lots going <laughs> lots of texture on my cards So yeah, glue dots are one of my favorite adhesives, and they certainly help to keep that star stuck. You're just rolling one up and sticking it between the the toothpick and the stick. The little hole there is really snug, so the stick's not going to go anywhere that the star is on. But I did add a little bit of tear and tape to the back just to keep the star from moving like side to side. Um, it's a, probably not essential. It, it was just my kind of my preference. It's not in the instructions to do it that way. I guess that's what I should say. Not it's not the essential. <laughs> so yeah, I believe this is about where I realized that I had I had jumped the gun and put my yay in the wrong spot and was 
trimming the cupcake liner. It's very easy. The top is scalloped. That would not be easy to trim, but to trim along the bottom where it was just kind of a bit of a curve, that was much easier to, to make it work. I think I've just, I did a couple of try. It's best to uh, cut a little bit off, check it, and then cut a little bit off instead of taking a lot off and realizing that that was too much. So if you're ever going to try to trim, fix your mistakes, um, then yeah, do it in small bits. No, don't make big chunks because um, you can't put it back on after. <laughs> But it was easy enough to fix. Um, I think it's important to show the mistakes because uh, we all make them. And the fact that there's usually a way to fix them. So you don't have to uh, you don't have to stress too much. You can usually fix something. You can put an embellishment over top of it or position your label in just such a way to cover the, the mistake. Or, you know, put an extra layer on. If all else fails, you just flip it over and stamp again, right? There's, there's usually a way to do something. Um, this piece of, of twine that they told you to cut, the six inches that the instructions say to cut, is a fairly small piece. If you're making just a loop or we're just like wrapping it around or like taping it to a parcel, I say wrapping it around the tape, um, then six, six inches is long enough. If you wanted to actually tie it around a mug or a bottle of wine or a coffee cup or something, uh, you might want to make it a little bit longer. It's a little bit short if you want to tie it easily. And on the other tag, I'll show you kind of an easier way to do it that works quite well with the six. So this is our second tag, and uh, the little brown piece is just kind of layering in behind. Um, it, it has dimensionals on it, so you want to make sure you stamp on the sentiment piece first before you layer it up. I, I, I almost did, and I've done it numerous times before where I've put all the layers together and then realized I had to stamp. And although I have stamped on dimensionals before, I don't recommend it because it will work a lot of the time, but then there's that time that it doesn't. So I don't think you want to be chancing it too much. So the little the little candles, those were easy enough just to put in with, with uh, glue dots. I think with this one, yeah, this is the one that says it's your birthday. Which makes you always want to sing that it's your birthday get your thing but i don't actually <laughs> that's all i know it's your birthday and i know no other lines okay so we're putting that on the um the glue dots come in the kit i was using the ones that were on my roll but even though part of these candles is going to be underneath um the label i still think you want to put um, a glue dot at either end just so they're not twisting or coming out or anything like that. Well, apparently I've gone back to doing the labels now. I thought I was doing the other one. This is, I do like to make the kits just on the fly. And I, I would assume this is how most of you guys are doing them. When you do them, you open it up and you start taking pieces out and you start putting. So it is real, it is real life crafting. But if you're following along, well, I never, I guess I never really realized until now how much jumping back and forth I do on things. But, you know, that's how my squirrel brain works, so I guess that's just what happens. Okay, so now I'm putting the glue dots on the candles.
Yep, those are ink pads in the background. Trying something out. One of the things I mentioned on here got me thinking, and now I'm trying to see if I can make it work. So you'll see at the end of it. If you see anything extra that I mentioned in the video in the projects, you'll you'll know I was successful. If not, you'll know it did not work. Okay, so these the little candles I think I mentioned at the beginning, the little candles, the little candle flames, um, are on the sheet. They're adhesive, and yes, in the process of taking those out, I did stick the candle, the glue dots on the candles to the back of them, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, I find it easier to if you're trying to line two things up. Put the fixed point down, so put the put the candle flame down, and then once it's down, it it was easier to line up the um, the candle base with it instead of putting the base down and then trying to put the little piece on. It's easier to put the little piece on when you have the when there's nothing that you have to match up to. It's just there's less to hold on to. It's a little harder to do, I find. So I like to I like to make it as easy as possible on myself. So we've got those down, a little bit of a jaunty angle to the candles. And then we can just pop our label over top. I love how this tag turned out. Like seriously, the more I saw the projects, the more I liked the projects and the more I knew I had to get the kit. Um, and I think you could easily take either one of these tags and put it on a card base. Um, I'll show you the alternates I made and you'll see that yeah, I guess they're in similar size to the tag, um, or either tag. So yeah, add a card base, or in some cases a note card. I used a note card for um, a couple of the alternates just to show you. But if you do it that way, um, the tags become cards if you want, if you don't have a need for the tags. And instead of leaving a loop, you can just tie the, tie the twine into a bow, and it'll just add a little bit extra design to your card. So this one, I just tied like a little knot on the end. You can easily loop over something be taped down um but yeah it's it's i guess if you know what you're if you know what you're doing with your tag when you make it you can you know cut a piece of string and put it on there if you don't you can always just keep the twine and wait until you actually go to use it yeah very very pretty very sparkly tag um i was quite impressed with how that worked out and the good news is i know that next up is a card and like i said once i started this card i realized um, that I had uh, not unmuted my phone or my camera and so at this point I did unmute it and and then it gets a lot easier because then I will be talking in real time and I will leave you on this audio track and um, it will be I would think much easier to follow at that point I will tell you this voiceover stuff is uh, it's very hard to do it's very hard to try to remember what I was saying and try to make it make sense and I feel like there's lots of pauses but I figured it was better than giving you just a blank 26 minutes, I think it was. 23 minutes. We're at 23 minutes. A blank 23 minutes to watch. Um, this card has um, four different stamps, I think, in it. One, two, three, four. I think it is four. Um, so with your kits, you only get one block. I have lots of blocks and I have my probably have 40 of them because I do classes and stuff. I mean, it's definitely easier to have more blocks. So each time you get a kit, you get a block with it. So once you've bought a couple kits or if you have, you know, put it on your, your gift list, list to give to your friends and family that you would like extra blocks. Um, it is, it is quite handy to have. So in this case, yes, you'll see that I have like a block for each stamp. I don't have to take them off in between and clean them and put a new stamp on the block, but that's just because of how many I have. You do get the one block in the kit, but eventually, like I said, if you buy a few more of these kits or even with paper pumpkins, you'll end up with extra stamp sets and you'll have this, or like the stamp sets and the, the, what's left of the spots, maybe some extra pieces and you'll start to be able to mix and match those into your cards. Oh, there you go. See, I was, I was showing my extra stamp, my extra blocks. But yeah, we have the we have the textures for the balloons and the line for the balloons. And I'm just gonna wait and see because there's a, a, there's a good tip in here with the line for the balloons, but I can't remember exactly at which point it comes up. So this is me saying, remember how I said this looks like a beehive? When you turn it the right way, I think it looks like a lantern, like a paper lantern, like you would see at Chinese New Year or something. 
that's what I'm playing with right now as we speak, actually, is seeing if I can make that work. Um, and then, yeah, we have some other stripes I, that I, I mentioned, and I think I mentioned in here about the stripes. I did try one of the, the comments that I mentioned. I got a lot of use out of this one straight strip that I'm putting on the table right now. And I will tell you that I, the, the photopolymer bends very easily. So for something as fine as this, where it's easy to get it crooked, if you line it up on your graph paper, mat, whatever you have, something straight, like stamp side down, and then pick it up with the block, it's more likely to be straight than it is to be curvy. Not that you will stamp it straight, but just that the actual line itself will be straight. And it's much easier to do that way. Now I'm trying to figure out where the sound's going to kick back in here because we're right about the point where I realize and I think I should be able to hear it. Sorry, I'm just going to pause for a second and see if the sound comes out on the recording. Hi everybody. So anybody who's been up on watching the video up to this point has probably messaged me up already and told me that the sound does not work. But it's because I just realized that my I was doing something else with my computer and I had the microphone muted so it wouldn't pick up background noise. And I just realized it now that the microphone was muted. So we've made the first two tags <laughs> already. Um, I'll have to go back and add a little something to it. Uh, these tags, the, the instructions in the kit are awesome. Um, they are super easy to follow. So just follow the instructions. Um, when you're, if you're watching the video and you're wondering what I was doing, I did not, in fact, follow the instructions. It's not even that I didn't follow them. I just didn't even look close enough. This yay should have been stamped up between these two little, uh, con like very faint contour lines that are stamped on here. Um, this yay should be up in between there. I stamped mine too low, so I trimmed the bottom of my cupcake foil, my liner, so that I could not cover my word. So that was me making a mistake and then fixing it. Um, don't do that. Just follow what the instructions say. But those are the two tags. I'm not going to repeat those because um, you, the instructions are really good. But just to give you an idea, they went together really quick. You can see that from the video. And now that I've realized the microphone, now you can hear me in all my rambling, um, I could go back and re-record, but honestly, I don't even know what I said up until this point. I tend to like just do it in the moment and have no script or anything. Okay, so we're going to move on to this card. I put all my stuff on my blocks and try to keep my food straight. There we go. It's your birthday. So I'm not sure at which point I actually noticed now that I did that. I don't remember. Where did I do my other one? I'm, what I was mentioning just before I realized that though was this is the stamp that makes the string. And it is just a very thin, thin stamp. With photopolymer, it's very easy to make the, your stamps crooked because they're so pliable and bendy. So in this case, like I put the stamp, you know, as if I was stamping, like stamp side down. And I lined it up on one of the lines on my mat. And then I picked it up with my block. And that way I have the best chance that it's actually straight on the, now, I mean, whether or not I stamp it straight is another thing, but at least I'm not going to have this wiggly line that's supposed to be straight. Um, the other thing you can do is, is if you notice that you're die cutting things in the die cut and the stamps are not quite lining up, there's a good chance that's the same problem with photopolymer. So when you put it down, put your die on, on your table, the way it would cut and then put your set your stamp into it and it, like adjust it so it's fitting into the die like it's supposed to and leave it like that and then just pick the stamp directly up because then you it won't have, have any of your like 
and you don't even notice it when you're doing it because it's so easy to do they're so pliable but that's one way to do it so i know I, that's what i think i was saying just when i realized i don't know if i got to finish that okay so i've got one balloon done and then i'm going to do one balloon with the spots and i'm just the, the stamps are bigger than the balloon so I think as long as I make sure that that one that one little that one little dot on the very top there is not getting fully inked. There we go. So I'm just going to make sure that I got enough coverage that I'm not leaving a big gap on the balloon anywhere. Look how cute that is. Um, and then my again I apologize I don't know how much of it actually got caught <laughs> with the microphone when this was here I'll do it this way because I think you can see better when this was sitting on the piece of plastic I thought this looks like a a beehive but when I pulled it off and actually put it the direction of the balloon now I see a paper lantern like Chinese New Year paper lantern so not only does this give you stripes on your balloon but it gives you two other stamping opportunities <laughs> and since we have some extra pieces left um, you can use it for one of those things make some more tags if you want oh you could make a cool Chinese lantern tag or paper lantern tag and then um, put a yay on it or a Happy birthday. Oh, you could do all sorts of things. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this. And I think I had a pretty good shot of actually getting those lines straight. Yes, I did. Uh, but you could also stamp them at a diagonal. And because these are just these nice little thin lines, this is my messy background piece of paper. But you could also stamp one one way and one the other way and get that cool pattern. So there's that. Um... <laughs> I am trying to, I'm not putting any thing away in between in the interest of like making this quicker for you guys, but it is, uh, it's starting to clutter my desk. Okay, so in the instructions, it shows to, we're going to make three lines at the bottom here for the balloons. They all line up on the bottom, they're all equally spaced, and they're basically just a third apart. So the other thing that might, like help you with your making your thirds and this is these are going to be overlapped and I want to make sure these are out of the way these are going to be overlapped the, the opposite way with the with the craft ones underneath but but this gives me an idea just by loosely putting those there where my lines should go now it is these are the trickiest ones the smaller the stamp the trickier it is so the thing you want to make the most sure of when you do this is don't press too hard. This one actually lines up with your row of dots. So just gently place it down. Don't squish too hard because it's easy to smudge it and make a fuzzy line. Oh my goodness, look at that. And um, and yeah, don't wiggle it around. The, the, like I said, the finer the line, the, the trickier it is to do. I don't actually want these right to the edge. So I'm looking. So what, as soon as I, like I put my balloons roughly where they're going to go. I'm going to move these in a bit so you can see. So that this middle balloon lined up with a row of dots. So when I look now, this next stick or string actually lines up with a different row of dots. So that's going to make it a lot easier for me to figure out where to put this and get it somewhat straight is that one. And now I bet you if I just went three dots over, is that the right one? One, two, three, three dots over. I can use this line. And look at that. That was way easier than I thought it was going to be. Okay, I'm very happy that that went that well. Okay, so now it shows me to put... You. I keep saying it shows me. So I am looking at the instructions. I'm trying to make at least... A lot of times I just look at the picture and just go, I think it means this. Um, but I do try to at least make the first sample the way the, the thing tells me to, the instructions. Um, and then after that, I do whatever I want. You don't have to make anything the way the kit says. You can do whatever you want with any one of them. But because I know I have extras and because I wasn't making these for a specific person or, or date or anything, um, I am going to make one. Just the... the um, what do they call them all of a sudden? I, they're not the, like the project, the, they're not artisans. I can't remember the word. The people that stamp it up to make these things. Um, they are so good at what they do. <laughs> like as much as there's lots of different alternatives and people do different things. Um, 
oh, if you just follow along and do what they say, you can't go wrong there either. Um, so in this, in the instructions for these ones, um, this one's got extra, extra room on the side. Um, it, it shows just to put one dimensional on the back of the craft colored balloons. I've mentioned it before. I think on a bigger, and some things are small enough, you have no choice. Uh, sorry, in case you were wondering what I was doing, I was cutting along the edges. That's what I do every time. These pieces are much bigger, but um, I cut, as soon as I start taking them out, I cut along the edges because then it gives me some different shaped pieces and I use every piece of this paper. Like there's no, there's no wastage here. So along the side, you get like smaller pieces. This, like I said, these ones are a little bit bigger. Um, I find if you have a big enough piece of paper, if you put one in the middle, you're more likely that your, your piece is going to like go crooked or kind of twist on you. So I always like two dimensionals. Maybe you just cut one of the regular ones in half or something, or cut pieces from around the edge that are slightly smaller. But I like to have at least, um, two dimensionals on a bigger piece. That's just me. I just pulled the backing off of that as opposed to the actual dimensional. There we go. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm going a little bit rogue, but I'm going rogue. You won't even notice it if I hadn't mentioned it. Okay. So then we're going to line these guys up a little bit lower than the big balloon's going to go. And we're going to line them up on their strings. This card's a little puffy. Line this guy up. And then, and definitely, it says in the instructions, but I, I put my dimensionals in, in the middle. Um, and you want to, because they got to hit here and not here. <laughs> Otherwise, your card will be very thick. And then I'm going to put this one a little bit higher. I would actually like it to go higher than that. So my string, my, and there's does, so I can see what they're doing now. Um, my string only goes to here, but we're going to put a balloon. No, we're not going to put a balloon. We're going to put a, a bow on the end of the balloon and we're going to use those fancy little uh, tassels that I said were in here. So that's actually what's going to cover up the fact that the string does not go all the way to the balloon. So I can put the balloon higher up and because this is there. So there's my little tassel. And then it, again, again with the six inches, it tells me I need a six inch piece of string to make the balloon or to make the balloon, to make the bow for the balloon. Sorry, I, there was a total rookie mistake to not make sure that the microphone was on. Um, but I've had, the last few days have been super busy. I'm very tired today. Uh, daylight savings time certainly didn't help. Um, and my throat is overused <laughs> from so much talking and visiting and uh, cheering at one point. Um, so yeah, I, maybe, maybe I should have waited a day to do the video. Okay. So I'm going to put a little rolled up glue dot on my balloon knot so I can put my balloon. Oh, you know, one of the, so I told you, well, <laughs> I told you at the beginning, so you have no idea I said it. Um, one of the, uh, one of the things, like I said, I had seen these projects and that's what I was looking for. I'd seen these projects and I was like, oh, nice. They're a lot of gold though. But then I kept seeing them over and over again. And one of the ones that actually made me think, oh my God, I have to get it is actually this card. I absolutely love this card. I realize it's fairly simple. It's got a few steps and stuff. It's fairly simple. I love it. Love it. Now I want to, um, there we go. I like to stamp on my envelopes and on my insides. And there's usually some kind of a stamp. So there is, I don't know what I did with it. There it is. There is the little stamp that has confetti, which I don't actually know. Does that go on the other card? Yes, it does. Because uh, the stamps are all used eventually. But the idea is just to have a little surprise when you open the inside. So it doesn't even matter that much what it is. In this case, I'm just going to stamp some dots in the corner. Just because it's a fun little surprise. Because you probably weren't expecting dots in the corner. And um, you could stamp stripes. You could do both. Uh, you could put the it's your birthday. You could use the the 
whatever I just called that stuff, confetti from the other one. But look at that, just a little extra something when you open it up. And it's not so big that it gets in the way if you want to like write a lot on the inside. Love this card. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. I'm going to have to stack these things a little bit. I'm starting to you know, get out, run out of space here. We'll bring those back in afterward. Okay, and then for the last card we have, and again, I will endeavor to at least consider what the, what the introductions say. So I will open those to the right page. So then we have again our a pretty envelope with our gold and our little gold corners. There's that one. I got a card base. So I, yeah, I stacked everything up. So now basically I just got to pull one of each thing out. I got a card base. I know I need those candle flames. I got a frame. Oops, trying not to knock everything over here. I got a frame. I have a banner for the sentiments. And I got a little a little fancy strip there to make it pretty. Move those back over there. So this is where our last two stamps come in. <laughs> and by the time we're done, we will have used every stamp in the pack. Which is, you know fun goal use every stamp in the pack you should try that with one of the bigger stamp sets when you get like a new stamp set see if you can figure out a way to make a few different projects and use every stamp in the pack <laughs> okay and there's my little confetti okay so that is it empty stamp paper okay so in this case my bone folder figure out what i did with my bone folder it is showing me that i want I want to stamp some confetti around my cake. Now, this is only doing three, and I do like to have odd numbers. But I also have to look at what the card looks like, because I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, because okay, so when I'm looking at this whole card and I'm like, that's it? Three? That doesn't seem like a lot. But... The amount of stuff we're going to add to this card and the fact that we're going to put this on it, which is going to cover up a good chunk. Oh, well, there's lesson number two for you. I guess there's a reason they stamped closer to the cake than I did is because the frame covers part of it. But that's OK, because you can still see it. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot more going on in this card. So, yes, you could all the stamping you do there wouldn't really wouldn't really be visible anyways. Okay, so I'm going to just stamp one more time like I was supposed to. And that's just going to give me a little bit extra of the corner, but you won't even notice it. Okay, so this needs dimensionals as well. Uh, this is a big piece, so for sure we're going to put at least in the corners. Um, because I, I don't like my cards to sag. Nobody wants a saggy card. Uh, I'm going to put a piece, one in each of the middle as well. And even on this short piece, I'm going to put one there too. Because I just want it to be as, as uh, clean and straight and everything as it can be. So this is going to go here. The label is going to go on the outside. So next up would be, I should put before I, before I put that on, I should put on my candle flames. So in this one, um, because they're stickers, they're just showing them stuck down. You could, if you wanted to, um, when you get something that's a sticker, if you want to use it, I ripped part of the backing paper off that one. So if you wanted to do it a little bit different, you could just use your hand. You're, you can use your pant leg, but sometimes you get fuzzies on it that then you can't get them clean. So I'm just going to use my thumb, and I'm going to take the the sticky off that. And I do that. What did I do with my? There we go. Um, I do that because the one time I didn't, I put a, I put a dimensional behind. I put it on the back of the card, and then the card got squished a little bit, and so the piece that didn't have the that I hadn't like that was sticking out behind the dimensional. Um, actually stuck to the back of the card and it kind of stuck the card a little bit where it wasn't supposed to. So I take off the extra sticky and then I'm just going to put every second one. I could have done it the other way. We've done three of them, but 
I just decided it after I put the first one down. Um, and so I'm going to take the sticky off just so just in case so it doesn't stick where it's not supposed to. Um, and I'm just popping up the in-between ones because I like that little bit of dimension. So it's not really changing the way the card looks. Not a lot anyway. Um, it's just enough. And I'll add my little... Actually, I think because I learned my lesson from the last one that it like just fits on that half of a full-size dimensional. Just fits on the back of the flame. So I'm going to actually just trim a little bit off the one end so that it fits better. Okay. So I keep leaning back, which I know means my hands keep going off the screen, but I have to be able to see what I'm doing as well. Um... <laughs> Okay, so then I just put dimensional on that one too. So there we go. And it just, it's, I don't even know if you can tell from there, but when you look at it like this, it's just, it just gives it a little bit more dimension. I just, I just like it. And because I know that I'm putting the frame around it on dimensionals, it's not like it's going to all of a sudden make the card thicker than it was supposed to be. So, okay. And then, that's when I got my instructions covered up. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at the next step while I do the first step. Okay, so then we're going to peel all our little backings off so I can put all of this on. Remember, remember where I ended up. There we go. So we're going to center this. This is not go edge to edge. There's a bit of a border, so you try to get your nice even... Oops. <laughs> Oops, I put that a little bit too low. There we go. Put your nice even border on it. The bottom one keeps sticking before I'm ready for it. There we go. And then we need to get this ready. So I've got my happy cake day. Okay, so I went, I just would like it to go on record, other than the fact that I just stuck my finger in it right now, that I've had that ink pad open for the entire time I've been making all four projects. And I have not dropped anything in the ink pad yet. Go me. But having said that, now that I've stamped the last thing, I am going to close the ink pad because I do know me. Okay, so I might that's good. So we're going to I stamped my sentiment, and then I'm going to use the um, I'm going to use glue dots if I can get them to stick. Okay, so usually when you're using like your roll of glue dots, you can stick your paper to it. Sorry, I keep going off screen again. Um, you can stick your paper to it and kind of pull up and just sort of pull the glue dot up with it. Um, that doesn't work as well, I just found out, with this gold paper because you can kind of pull the coating of the gold paper off. So I fixed that. I just moved it over and fixed it. So I would suggest putting your glue dot on your paper, not trying the shortcut because it's uh, it doesn't work as well with the gold paper. And then I'm just lining this up so I can center and hope that I get even ends coming out of them. Oh, I think I did. I can center this behind so it just gives it a little, a little bit fancier. Oh, that's okay. I was going to say if we're sticking this on top with dimensionals, it's going to get awfully thick. Okay, so where did I do with my dimensionals? So I'm going to go back to... Um, cutting my dimensionals in half just to make them a little thinner and then I, I, we're gonna stick this we're gonna stick this down but we want to make sure that we we're hitting the right spot so I'm actually gonna put my dimensionals on the card and I'm gonna put them right there right butted up against this frame because I want to make sure that I don't end up with them half on the half on here and half on here because it'll make it all wonky layers so I'm going to do that and then let me guess, six inches. Oh, this time, see, it's because I was being a smart arse. I actually need eight inches, apparently, of, of twine for this bow. So we're going to make a bigger bow. Where did my thing go? <laughs> okay, so this one, and here's definitely that way. I don't know, it shows in the back to stick it on with a glue dot, but I don't know if, it, if it's quite as clear as... If you put the glue dot down... This is this way. So, and you make your, you just kind of lay your balloon, your balloon, again with the balloon, you lay your bow into the glue dot. Then 
then you can kind of manipulate to make sure you get the right like your loops are big enough then I could go this way and make my loop big enough you want your loop or your bow to be kind of like peeking out from behind your banner so there we go and, and so instead of tying a big knot behind there we're just looping it in but see now my bow hangs out and you would never know that there's not a knot because it's gonna stay where it's supposed to I guess I should peel these little piece of paper off I'm gonna peel those off and then I'm going to keep my balloon straight when I do it. And that straight and line everything up. Boink. And there's my little label. And then I might want to, I might want to trim these a little bit. So once it's in place, because now that it's in place, I think this loop is too big. So I have a feeling this loop is this one. I'm not hundred percent sure. Yep. Sometimes you can give it a little pull. I can give it just a bit of a pull. Okay, so I'm just going to trim that a little bit because it is hanging off the card quite a bit. There we go. Look at how cute that is. And then, oh, so I closed my ink pad. Closed my ink pad. And then before I wrap everything up, I'm not stamping on the envelopes because they have all that pretty gold on them. But I just twisted my card as it sprung out of my hand because I was trying to do too many things at once. Um, I'm just going to stamp some confetti on the inside of this one and then close that up before I, Murphy's Law takes over. Okay, so pretty gold envelopes. But look at that. So there's one of the cards. You get, so you get three of these cards. Here's the other card with the balloons. And then I have all my bits and pieces everywhere. And then we've got, it's your birthday. And sorry, I keep moving everything. And then our little yay cupcake. So we have all of these projects. We're going to end up with one extra set of balloons, likely some labels, and these three insides. So using these extra little bits and pieces, I would be interested to see what you guys come up with. See, we have an extra label, like all these little bits and pieces we're going to have to come up with to make either extra cards or extra tags using this kit. But even if you just make what's in the kit, are these not awesome projects? Three tags, three of each of the tags, three of each of the cards. Birthday sparkle. This is a good one. Love it. So thanks for hanging out with me. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to figure out how to go back and put a little, put a little title on the front of my video that says, sorry, it was partway through the video before I realized the mic was muted. Um, if there's anything you don't understand about the first part when you couldn't actually hear me talking, um, let me know. And um, enjoy your kit. Happy putting together. Thanks, everyone. Bye.